So what it's saying is, as we stand and we say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, we're thinking of that supreme document called the Constitution, which gives us freedom of speech, separation of church and state, freedom of religion, and the, the pursuit of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. All those things... The Bill of Rights and all those things that are added to it. That is what we are pledging allegiance to, not to any leader. When I look at that flag, I'm not looking at Obama. When I look at that, that flag, I'm not looking at George Bush. When I'm looking at that flag, I'm not looking at any leader. I'm looking at that wonderful document, that wonderful thing that governs our country, that our judges and our presidents and all of our Congress and our Senate should and have not, but should keep clean and right and pure that we are in a safe and peaceable society. That's government's place. Let's continue a little further. <clears throat> go, go, if you will, to verse 2. It says, Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now, listen to me very clearly, because I'm not for lawlessness, and God isn't either. Any law that this government puts in effect, even if it has to do with your own house, unless you want to move neighborhoods, and unless you choose to move somewhere else, you and I our duty bound to submit ourselves to that law as long as it does not infringe upon what we believe and it doesn't infringe upon God's laws. Period. They tell you you need to, you need, you, you need to clean up the mess your dog made and you don't do it, then you send in the 100 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever the fine is. They tell you that you're not supposed to park a certain place because you're a Christian. Don't play the Christian card. Well, I'm doing God's business. The officer's just going to say, well, I'm doing God's business too. I'm a leader, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an authority, and this is, this is the law. So I'm sorry, but here's your ticket. You can go see the judge and if you have any problems with it. It, it involves every... Every single law of life that human government has put in place, as a Christian, we are to be law-abiding citizens. Period. What a poor testimony, as a Christian, that we would break the law. Paul tells us, if we break the law, we should be judged as a violator of that law. But if we are judged and we are tried for crimes that are against the law of God? Or in other words, rather, we are, we are judged falsely and wrongly for something that breaks God's law? We are standing for right and government is trying us or punishing us for doing something that's right. That's when we have the option to cross the line. Now, there are two dangers as believers. And here's one. One is going farther beyond and becoming an anarchist. And second is not taking a stand. You say, well, show me that in Scripture. How many Jews were in Babylon with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Why were there only three? Daniel, I think, was excused. I don't think Daniel had a lapse of faith. I, 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 that just makes no sense. Because shortly after that, Daniel goes to the lion's den. Where were all the rest of those Jews? Why were there only three young men that stood and said, we're not going to bow to another god? Because those other people crossed the other line of not standing for truth and standing for right. Right is right. 
And so if, they, if, 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 you are, if you believe in worshiping the only true God, you don't bow to an idol. If you, if you believe in, in doctrine, you believe in biblical truth, you don't compromise that, no matter what the consequence. Now, I'm thankful that in America, we don't put people in jail for preaching. But if it comes to that, then I'll go to jail for preaching. Because we have a free course in our country to spread the gospel. And we can be thankful for that. Continue. Look in, look in verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works. That's, that's the role of government. They're not, they're, not to, they're not supposed to punish you for doing what's right. But to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Now, the, 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 there's two things there. There's fear and there's reverence. Note what it, what it says. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be it what? Afraid. There's fear. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God to thee for good, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. And they're full-time employees. That's what they do. They're government officials. And they are paid a reasonable compensation for the time that they spend to keep our life safe. Now look at verse 7. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. There is a fear that creates an anxiety when we've done something wrong. How many of you, when you see a policeman, automatically slow down? Or when you see a policeman, even you don't even, maybe, maybe it, it, there's just, there's like this pit in your stomach and you, you wonder, do you do anything wrong? You start thinking. Why is that? It's automatic because of their office. That's a healthy fear. But then there's also an honor that we as God's people are to have to our government officials. We, we respect the office of president. We respect the office of mayor. We respect the office of police chief, of fire chief of city council, of human government. That doesn't mean we have to agree with everything that they do and that we, we believe what they believe. But we are people that are conscious of doing the right thing. And we have honor to those who are serving us in our country. That's the right relationship. If you don't, then you will never do the next part, which says in other passages, pray for your leaders. Most of us grumble about them, right? When we should be praying for them. I'd, I'd like to see Obama saved. I would. I have no interest in, in his philosophies and what he believes. None. But he is our president. And I should pray for him and his wife, Michelle, and for his kids. For, for no Christian should ever desire that any man or woman or boy or girl would ever go to hell. That's the difference in Christianity. That's what this government and this world doesn't understand about Christians. We are taught from little bitty that we are to be decent we are to love, we are to even love our enemies, and we're to pray for those who despitefully use us and pray for those who hate us. We don't bomb them. We don't blog them. Now, now let, me, let me say this. There have been many pastors who publicly have made statements that have hurt 
candidates. Now let me tell you this. That has crossed a line. I'm not going to name names. Because it's happened, it it's continuously happens. We as believers are not Republican, Independent, Democrat. That's not our major thing. We're, we're, we're saved people. You've got to determine the position you are going to take morally and vote your conscience and principle, not party. Now, there are a lot of things that people believe about different parties, and that's your business, and that's what you believe. I'm basing what I'm doing this coming election and next election on this. That's it. That's the right relationship with government. You know what I want and what I'm praying? is that I continue to have freedom to preach the gospel every day. That my kids and my grandkids are going to grow up in a country and in a nation that loves God and a nation that blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord, a nation that would, uh, would, would still have hope for revival, a nation that would still have the opportunity to get the gospel to a lost world. More mission work is being done nationally and worldwide than any place than America. We send more missionaries and do more work in the kingdom of God than any nation in all the nations of the world combined. I don't want that to stop. And I don't think God does either. But we're not going to do it any other way than, than here. <clears throat> and here. We read the word. And we go on our knees. And then we speak with our mouths the wonderful works of God.